In this video, we install Serial 9 front upper control arms on our JZX100 Toyota Chaser. Stop it, we're not saying that on camera. The reason why we're installing the Serial 9 front upper control arms actually started off because Emily and I were driving home in the rain last year and the car was wandering all over the highway. In fact, we thought we were gonna, we were gonna crash. Uh, we panicked and we said, hey, you look, our front upper control arms must be bad. We're gonna have to order some good stuff. So let's order the best stuff we can from Serial 9. Turns out our front upper control arms are totally fine. Uh, our tires were bald. And, uh, and if, if you know anything about Washington rain is when it rains, it pours. And if your tires aren't up to snuff, you're gonna crash. And our tires were like beyond, beyond bald in the front. It has a mixture of too much camber and too much toe in any direction, positive or negative, and it wore out the inside of our tires. So we ordered these. There are some things that make the Serial 9 upper control arms a little different than everybody else. First of all, we're gonna start with the quality. They're powder coated white, they have heim joint, it's like made out of amazing metal. You got a nice ball joint on the top, it's already greased, you can replace it if you want. But the big thing that makes the Serial 9 front upper control arms different than anybody else is this thing right here. This allows you to adjust camber on a micro level while the front upper control arms, or what they say is in situ. So like you could literally have the wheel still on the car and you can get up in here with a wrench if you can get around the wheel and adjust the camber. I'm never gonna do that. I'm probably gonna have the car aligned at an alignment shop and it's gonna be perfect. Maybe take it to PMW Race, maybe take it to some place that is used to working on these cars. However, the reason why I love these is because there is no weak point on these arms that I can think of. Some of the other upper control arms, which I'll show you in a second, all the camber adjustment is up here on a floating mount. And if those Allen bolts come loose, everything could come loose. This is like the best up front upper control arm I could ever imagine. But before we get into the install, let's pull out our old Cuscos, compare the two, and then show you how to install. We have the Cusco front upper control arms already installed, and we've done a video on how to install these. And the way you take them out, it's gonna be pretty freaking easy. First of all, there's a cotter pin right here. Pull that, then you're gonna pull the castle nut. The ball joint should separate from the spindle. The spindle's gonna be pretty dang heavy because uh, there's still a lot of weight on here. Now it's still on the coil lever, so it's not gonna droop too much, but it will separate. I got these super long 14s that are pivot heads and you get in here and you loosen up these 14s right in here. It's pretty straightforward. There's really not much to it. Now I will say if you have fat hands or fat tools and you really wanna get in here to help tighten this, it really helps if you remove the coil over from the top mount up here and the reason why is because it allows you to kind of move it out of the way and get in here and really torque it down if you don't have a super long uh, 14 like i do now that you know how to do that i'm not gonna, you're not going to watch me turn wrenches there's really only like three bolts you really got to loosen here and then um we'll compare the two once i get it out so there is that all right everything should be clear the strut bar is a little loose but that's okay now we can move the coil over out of the way to pull out one of the bolts that holds in the entire front upper control arm. If I actually removed the entire coilover and made sure the brake line here was super duper loose so it wouldn't break. This is my ABS sensor actually. So um, there's a collar that goes on the BCs that allow you to adjust the height here of the ABS sensor. And then if by loosening this bolt, there we go. Now we have no binding issues of the ABS sensor on this collar. Super easy, it's gonna be loosey goosey for now. Just bolt it back in. But anyway, now I, that I have moved the coil over out of the way, I can easily pull this bolt out up in here. And the install, you're gonna, is, you're gonna run into that too. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't talk about that on their upper control arm videos, but if you pull the coil over, you're gonna give yourself a lot more room in there. And actually, I figured this out the hard way when I tried to do these a long time ago. So just pop the coil over out. It'll save you in the long run. Anyway, now let's do the same to the other side. All right, we go. We got both front upper control arm mounting bolts out. The Cusco is in there, but it should be free. And she's out. Now we can compare the Cusco, which, you know, a little bit of rusting on the top here to the Serial 9. 
The other cool thing about the serial nine is it tells you what side. So this says left, and this is the left side here. So let's compare the two. First and foremost, I haven't adjusted the serial nine, so you can see how much shorter this is compared to the Kuzco. And really what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna loosen up these jam nuts and give, give myself some more positive camber so that at least this gets really close to where this is. And the reason why I'm gonna measure everything out and I, I at least want it similar, if not identical, is it saves me more alignment time when I'm done. Let's compare the way these work. As we know, this threaded bolt here allows this part of the front upper control arm to move in and out. This is extreme camber. And then the Cusco, that part is fixed. It's this pillow ball or this uh, adjustable plate here that allows you to go super negative camber or positive camber. Now I have this on the most negative it can go. Um, I do have all six bolts in there, they're tight as hell. And realistically, this was not hard to use. Uh, Emily and I really thought like this was loose and that's why we were losing traction, but there's nothing wrong with the Cusco. Just the systems are different. The Serial 9 just looks a lot prettier and is built a little bit more tough when I go. But you can tell, I mean, that's going to be like, you're here? It's going to be insane camber. I mean, it's going to be like fucking crazy. I could probably put like 11s on the front of the car. All right, I got everything on max setting on the Serial 9 arms. Now they say you don't want to put more than 18 millimeters of space in this bolt here because there's not enough threads to hold it you know, strong. If I measure this to the T here, so the screen might get a little funky, so we're gonna use the actual numbers on the slide. So let's go to 18. Let's actually lose the battery door cover too while we do this, that's fun. Right on the money, 18 millimeters. And then here, 18 millimeters, right on the money. So you can already tell I'm probably going to gain, I'd say, another two or three degrees of negative camber by putting these on. That's going to be fun. No more rubbing. The car's going to look crazy. I probably need to get a wider front wheel. I only have eights in the front, so probably nines or even tens. And actually, I was waiting to do this. I do have a set of wheels on the way, but um, sadly, they're not here yet. So we're just gonna put these on for now. Be Mr. Negative Camber Boy with small wheels until my good wheels show up. I put my bolts in, I put the arm in. This just feels so nice. Uh, I actually finger tightened the bolts here and I made sure I tightened down the jam nuts here so I wouldn't get too much adjustability with this on the car. I don't, I don't want that. And now all I gotta do is move the spindle back in place put the uh, ball joint through the spindle, tighten everything down, and I'm good to go. Now's a really good time, uh, now that everything's loose, to put the coilover back in place. Because if I try and tighten it in, and then I gotta put the coilover around stuff. So put the coilover back in now, and then uh, kind of tighten everything down. Because it's a lot easier to get a wrench in and tighten things, as opposed to like try to get a bolt through a really tight space. So we're gonna put these coilovers back. Things are gonna look real pretty. And then uh, we'll move on over to the other side. Serial 9 recommends you put these to 150 foot pounds, the jam nuts. And that's gonna be a lot if you're just using a 15 16 wrench like this. I mean, I do have some leverage on here. I could probably get it. But I mean, it's gonna be cheater bar and full strength to get that. All right, since I'm gonna have so much more negative camber in the front, good opportunity to go even lower in the front. Why not? You know, it's just like nobody makes this front lip anymore. It's not like this car is rare or anything. Let's just slam it. And so the way I'm going to do that is I measured the distance of the coilover height from the bottom, um, the two collars right now. And we're, I'm at 55.6 millimeters. And so what I'm going to try and do is even out both sides. And I'm probably going to drop this another five or six millimeters, loosen up this, uh, twist it down to get it a little bit lower. And then that way every, bo both left and right side are exact same height and um, I'm a little bit lower. A little pro tip is of course, you're gonna need to do a nut and bolt check later, but uh, jack up the wheel, put some load on this stuff and then tighten it down because then uh, it's tightened at load. And when you put your wheel on and lower the car, it's ready to go, or more ready to go than before. Do yourself a favor, do a nut and bolt check when you can, but uh, that'll help you in the long run. And this one was a little bit of a nasty bolt here. Um, this really, really required a lot of force to get it up to where I could get the cotter pin through the bolt here, but I did, 
and I made sure everything was level before I did that because otherwise it's at like a really bad angle and to get it up and in is, is hard. So I kind of cheated and I did that first. Put the ABS line back, tightened the coil over, and now all I gotta do is add a cotter pin through there and I'll be good to go. All right, we got everything bolted up. We got the wheel back on. I turned the wheel while I was installing it and I actually think once this thing goes straight, I'm gonna have way more clearance up here. Now, I know the camber is way more negative and the thing we're gonna have to adjust once we actually get the car on the ground is the toe. If I have bad, cam if I have really negative camber and the toe's okay, then I'm not gonna wear as fast. But if this car has too much inward or outward toe combined with negative camber, it's really gonna wear the inside of that tire out probably in like two or 300 miles it'll probably go bald and we're gonna go do the other side and then we're gonna throw the car on the ground do a quick toe adjustment and we should be good to go for a road trip tomorrow we're at 71 and one or three eighths in the front between three eighths and three eighths and a half and the back of the front tire is 71 and three eighths so I think we have like uh, what is it a 32nd of an inch toe out on this car and I'm totally cool with those specs They look way more aggressive looks like way more aggressive toe out from out here, but the number doesn't lie I mean, I got it measured out now that we got the car sorted with new upper control arms and we lowered the front It's time to actually take it on its very very first Canyon run slash cruise the boys and I are gonna take this car and head up to Mount Baker, Washington cruise around Mount Baker and then head back. It's gonna be a huge drive, probably one of the biggest drives I've ever done in this car, period. And we're gonna see how she does. So let's just cut to that footage now. that's it for this one thank you so much for watching we had a great time driving the chaser all the way up to mount baker and back honestly those are the furthest i've ever driven this car i don't know if i'm ever going to drive it that far again because it was probably 10 hours of driving that day oh and some chick at the gas station decided to hit me we're going to post that video on my instagram but other than that car looks great it looks amazing at this ride height i'm so excited to keep driving it so excited to take it more places and I'm so excited to keep working on this car. If you, like, if you guys want to see more Chaser content and you want to see us keep moving forward on our JZX100 Chaser, drop us a comment. Uh, make sure you hit like, comment, subscribe. Also, if you are watching the channel because of all the Sequoia mods, we've got some really, really big stuff coming soon on the Sequoia. No, it's not a regear and it's not lockers, but for me, it's almost just as good. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.